Hey you, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com and in this video, we're gonna talk about when should you move on to learn your second programming language. So without any of that other bullshit, let's jump right into it. So this question is actually inspired by The Prime on my YouTube channel and essentially he wants to know how does one test himself or herself if he or she has become an expert in Python. So meaning when do I move on to another language and when do I know I've become an expert in Python. Here's how I would answer that question. This question kind of frustrates me and I'm going to tell you why. It's almost like saying, hey, once I learn English and I become an expert in English, what language should I learn next? Well, if you came to America and you learned English to get here, maybe your next step is to look for a job using English. Maybe it wouldn't make sense for you to just randomly learn different languages right? Or if you went to China and learned Chinese, it doesn't really make sense for you to learn more languages like after you got done learning Chinese, like use your put your Chinese to use. So in this case, once you learn Python, put your Python to use, build projects, build apps, that should be your next goal, building real things using Python. The only time you learn newer languages is when you need to, for example, if you can't do like, for example, you can't do front end web development with Python. So that's the time you do need to learn about JavaScript. But I would say first learn about Python. And then when you need to go and learn about JavaScript. And if you're putting together a website, don't learn HTML till you start putting together the website, then yes, go ahead and learn HTML. Almost like if you were conducting business in another country, it would make a lot of sense for you to then start learning that language at that time, because that's going to be the most valuable for you, that's gonna be the biggest return on your investment. How does one know that they became an expert in Python? You don't, it's like you spend your whole life doing it. You can call yourself an expert. Uh, it's just like, how do you become an expert in English? I mean, there's no like one set time. It just takes you a lot of time. Uh, you build projects with it. Or you do things with English, you, you've been an expert in English. I, I consider myself maybe an expert in English. I have 140 different videos, but other people might think otherwise. Maybe people think you need a PhD to become an expert in English, right? So maybe people think you need to be the best selling author to be an expert in English. There's no real definition here to become an expert, build things with it, become an authority, like have a portfolio that shows what you've built with Python. You're an expert. You don't need to spend 50 years if you have multiple apps, multiple things that you've built with Python, you're an expert. Okay. So yeah, I get this question a lot. When should I learn my second programming language? When do I become an expert? Like, dude, you're, you learn Python to do stuff with it, right? The point is not to just learn Python and then just like run away and run. Like that's not the point of programming. The point of programming is not to learn a specific language. It's to actually understand the programming concepts behind it. That's what you should be investing your time in. Hopefully I nailed this question for you guys. What I want to do since we started this ask Kazi segment, um, I know on YouTube Q and Q won by a landslide, but on the Twitter platform and on Snapchat, ask Kazi dominated. Another reason why I didn't choose to go with Q and Q, I'm sorry, I kind of had to make like a little call here at the end of the day. I did take your suggestions into account. I had trouble sleeping, trust me. I was like thinking ab about what you guys had said. But Ask Kazi is like Ask Gary V. And then there's some other Ask shows too. And it's also great for hashtagging. How are you gonna do Q and Q with an ampersand? Also, what the heck does Q and Q even mean? Questions and Kazi? That doesn't make sense. So. I'm sorry, I decided to go the Ask Kazi route. And uh, usually what I'm gonna do is a top voted comment. I'm gonna generally try to answer that in the following videos. So if you have a question, like a burning question, this is your time to ask it. I will try to go through multiple questions and if the comments are top voted, I'm gonna answer them. But if they're just goofy and completely dumb and top voted, I don't know. I might still answer them, but you know, I'll just kinda have to like check and see how they are. 
Okay, guys, that's it. I love your faces off. Thank you guys for watching so much. This was episode three of Ask Kazi, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.